Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements project, we're going to be making some fake 3D text. Now, if you have the full version of Photoshop, you can make real 3D text over there with their 3D tools. Real neat, real cool. We don't have that ability here in Photoshop Elements, but we can easily fake it. We'll do this look right here. Okay, let's just get this out of the way, and we'll start off with a brand new file. File New blank file. I have mine set at the default Photoshop element size, which is a width of 6, height of 4 inches, there we are, and a resolution of 300. Choose OK. There it is. Now we need to have some text in here, obviously, so I'll click on the Type tool. I have mine set at Bauhaus 93 regular, which is a pretty fat typeface, and just regular setting. The size doesn't matter. Mine right now is 56 points, and I just have a kind of a, a nice medium cyan here and click someplace in in here this is as you can see here this is centered text I'll just click in the center and let's just type in fake 3d like that and choose OK now we can resize this grab the control handle and you can resize as you can see here and we'll get a real nice large size for our type. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now to give this a nice look, we're going to be putting this into a perspective, but I want to have this as a safety layer. So let's go up here, drag this up onto the new layer button. Let's hide that layer. That's my safety. This way I can always go back and retype, change my typeface, whatever, because it's still in text. On this layer, to do a perspective shift, we need to have this simplified. So right click and simplify. There it is. It's now just a graphic. So over here to image transform perspective. I'm going to pull this left side down a little bit. Let's pull the right side up a bit. And that gives us a kind of a, a 3D swoop in there. And hit the green check mark to put that as OK. So there's our basic 3D text. Now we're going to be making this look like 3D. We're putting in our sides, and that's going to be done by making a copy of this layer several times. But for this to work, you want to have these sides darker than the rest of the image. So we're going to be putting in a shadow on this, a drop shadow. And I'm going to be thinking of the light source up here, shining down this way. So drop shadow will be on this side, like that, you know, this side on the bottom. And then we're going to be moving our text that way, which will leave the shadow side as our extended side. So all that says, let's go back up here to our layer. Layer styles right here, layer style, style settings, drop shadow. And I'm going to set this one at just one, real small, real thin. That's all you want there, just a single size of one. Leave everything else as is. Choose OK. Now, to copy this layer, you hold the Alt key down and hit the Up key. So Alt and Up key. And as you can see here, it makes a copy of that layer and moves it up one pixel. Now, let go of the Alt key and hit the Left key. So we've now made a new layer, moved it up, and moved it left one. So we want to go up, left, up, left, up, left on this. So do that again. Stay on this, this new layer. Alt key up. Let go of the Alt key left. Alt key up, let go of the Alt key left. Alt key up, let go of the Alt key left. Just keep on doing that until we build up the thickness that we want. And that looks pretty good right there. We've done you know 13 copies, actually it'd be 12 because we did an original copy. And that gives us our edges in there. So there's the basic 3D. Now on this top layer, let's make this look a little bit better, and I'll give it a real thin bevel and emboss on the top layer, just to make it a little bit more interesting. 
Now I want a hard edged bevel so I can't just use the layer styles. If I use just the style settings in here to the bevel, this is always a soft bevel. I don't want, I don't want that. So make sure in the top layer, that's the one with the flat face facing us here. Come down to effects and right there is the simple sharp inner. That's the one you want. These are moved around sometimes in different versions of elements. So you want the one that says simple sharp inner, double click, and that gives you that kind of a beveled edge. Now we can adjust that edge with these style settings. So layer, layer style, style settings, and I'm going to bring this bevel down until it's just beginning to show just a little bit, maybe about five. It looks nice. It just gives us a little bit of a highlight up there and a little bit of shadow right there. It just, just makes it look a little bit more interesting. So there's the basic 3D text. Let's go back to our layers. Now, here's a real cool trick. I want to put this whole thing onto a new layer. And you can do that with a keyboard shortcut. Click on your top layer. And let's come down here. Let's hide that background. So the only things showing right now are just these layers, just the text layers that we made. So nothing else is showing. And we're on that top layer right there. Now hold down the Shift, Control, Alt keys all at once, Shift, Control, Alt, and then tap once on the E key. And there it is. What that does is it takes all of these layers, collapses all of these layers, and makes a new layer with the collapsed layers. We now have this as just one layer. Now again, that's the Shift, Control, Alt, and the E key to do that. Let me just hide all these now. So this, this can all go away. You can even delete these if you want to. You may want to save your first one right there in case you want to redo this. But that's all hidden and this is our original. Now, there's a little tip in here. I'm going to zoom in. I'll, I'll leave this as is for the for this finish, but if we zoom in, you see you have a little bit of an, an edge in here. This, this is, as we step and repeat, you get a little bit of that edge showing. If you want to, you can try to smooth that edge out a little bit. Let's go up here to Filter and Noise, and we're going to be doing a Dust and Scratches, and just bring our radius up just a little bit. You see just a little bit of that kind of smooth smooths things out. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and do that. Now, the problem is it also smooths out all the other edges as well. So it's, it's up to you if you want to, you know, knock off that that stepping a little bit. This is one way to do that. I'm just going to leave that as is, though, and let's fit this back on screen again. Fit on screen. There we are. Okay, so we have our basic 3D text. All we need now for this to show up, well, let's put a background in here. Now I have one, and I have a link for this in the description, so you can get that link. And File, Open Recent. This one, just a little picture of the Arctic. Kind of just a fun picture in there. We'll be using this side of it over here. I'll just drag that in and get rid of the original. And I'll pull that down underneath my 3D text, and there it is sitting on that background. Now this background is too large for my picture, which means I can move it around until I find just the look that I want. So I kind of like it over here, right in there. So this gives it kind of a, a Western movie look. But there we go, fake 3D text. Now you can play around with the layers in here. You can go up one and over two, up one over two, and you'll get a, a little different effect on that. If you want to put the shadow the other side, then move your text up and to the right and the shadow will be on the or the 3D effect on the left hand side. If you just move it up, the effect will just be on the bottom. If you move it down, the down arrow, the effect will be on the top. So you can choose where you want to have that effect just by which arrow keys you use to create that stair step effect. Let's now take this just one little step further and put a gradient inside of the text. So go back up here to the text layer. There we go. And I want to select just the text inside. That's easy to do. Grab the magic wand and click in there at select the text. Now notice that we're getting some of the other stuff outside as well. I don't want to have that. So the way you stop that is we're going to check contiguous. 
and I'll click into just the D here and it will just select that part of the text that's inside of the D. Now let's click over here to where it says new and then add just to the right of new. I can now click on each one of these letters and it's only going to select just that part that I'm clicking on and nothing else. Notice how it's leaving that edge of that bevel up there as well which is perfect. Okay we do want to fill this now with a gradient. Go to the gradient tool and it should be giving you a foreground to background gradient as your default which is the upper left hand corner right there. So it should be okay. Choose okay. Now I want to be pulling this from the middle out. We'll be using the radial gradient right there and I want to start with the light color and go to the dark color so let's inverse this. It always pulls it from the left to the right side on the little icon here. So somewhere about center which is right around in here I'm going to pull out like that and it gives us that gradient. Now you can do a little bit shorter gradient if you want to have you know, a little less white in there. It's up to you but there it is and that gives us that nice gradient inside of those letters. We can now deselect that, select deselect and there we go. Our fake 3D lettering is finished. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.